Thank you, Fabrice. All right, Kevin and I want to turn the tables a bit. Um, so we have heard all day just some fantastic talks about the why of biodiversity. And Fabrice just presented from a scientific perspective why biodiversity. Don't worry, we don't have any slides. This is fine. <laughs> um, and so we want to hear from you all. What is your why? And Kevin and I, we work on the Food EDU initiative, and we have one of our educational uh, one of our educational modules that talks about ways of knowing food and how that's really informed by our our experiences, the knowledge that we've gained throughout our lives. And so, for instance, I'll give an example. So. So biodiversity to me, I'm a dietitian. Any other dietitians in the room? All right, yeah. <laughs> Go dietitians. All right. Um, and my background's in public health nutrition. And so for me, when I think of biodiversity, I think about the fact that dietary diversity is linked to improved dietary quality. That if you eat a greater diversity of plant foods, more different types of fruits and vegetables, that you're going to have a lower risk for heart disease and diabetes, and you're going to have a more diverse microbiome. Um, and then I think about the fact that connecting food into the stories of the people and the cultures and the cuisines that cultivate it is so essential in ensuring that people will eat that food. And so that's from my perspective as a dietitian. Kevin's going to give his example, and then we want to hear from you. What is your why? Thanks, Jackie. Um, so as Jackie mentioned, the first module we have for our course track called Foodomics and Society is called Ways of Knowing Food. And one of the things that we explore in that is the importance of different ways of knowing food and how bringing those ways of knowing together can help us address critical challenges. So my background is as a sociologist. So one of the first things that I think about when I think about the diversity in food systems is the lack of it in the grocery sector or among the corporations that control, you know, where four, four corporations control 80% of our food supply. And the risks that we saw to that were very clear during the COVID pandemic, and we saw the supply chain start to break down. So when I think about diversity, I think about diversity of producers and diversity in the middle of that supply chain such that we can um, adapt to shocks in the system. And that kind of resilience and adaptability is a really important feature, I think, of diversity across the landscape. So now, uh, I'm a sociologist, I'm thinking about diversity in terms of corporations and consolidation. Jackie's thinking about it in terms of nutritionists and dietitians. How are you thinking about the importance of biodiversity? We're talking about so much microplastic nanoparticles all over in our food. And now they're finding it in a coronary plaque. So it's a very high risk for heart. So what, besides recycling, I mean, it's still not the plastic bags are there. It's, it's not there where we want to, but we are doing it. What else is being done to the soil so the food is protected? What are we doing to the soil to protect our food? Are there any projects going on working on microplastics? I'm sure there are. And, you know, I think in addition to recycling and soil remediation and things like that, somebody mentioned mushrooms earlier. Mushrooms are great at remediating soil. Um, and that's uh, on the right track. But I wonder if we could think some more about what food diversity and what biodiversity means to you and what issues is, is or the lack of biodiversity helping address. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, and I was looking at the rows and crops. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, centennial planting is important to balance out the nutrients in the soil. Okay. So I think um, those are some things that people need to be focusing on. That can help, help the soil. And also, when you look at if everybody's going to start growing, we don't want to have all this irradiated soil. Mm. Just look at natural ways to replenish the soil. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Mm. no longer tap into that are not even part of our diet when nature is our foundation 
when it comes down to the food that is really healthy and good for our bodies. There's a mm -hmm. lot of fruits, there's a lot of vegetables that are out there that every season comes up and us as the human species in this time, we don't tap into that. So we are missing out on some very valuable um, nutrients that come directly from nature and we are solely focusing on what we grow as human beings and have stayed far away from what nature just will bring up in mm. the spring, will bring up in the summer, will bring up in the fall. We don't tap into that anymore. And I think it's extremely important for us to do that because then it also puts us into the space of caring for the soil, right? Mm. Caring for the land that are directly in front of us this way, whether you have money or not, you have the option of still, hey, there's a tree across, there's a, a forest by where I live, there's some amazing plants growing there, being able to have access to that as well. So I think it's all around and not just thinking and looking at what we grow as human, but what also nature brings forth mm. to us every single season. Beautiful, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, that's great. The ecological Other diversity, it's, you know, it's, it's nature's abundance, right? I know we have some of our centers of excellence here who are doing incredible work in this area. Would anybody be willing to share their perspective? Oh. Globalization, mm. and we should uh, think more local. Mm. Local in terms of uh, production, local in terms of uh, commercialization, and also it's local our responsibility when we are shopping. Mm. So uh, if we push the local production, probably we can go a step forward through improve this uh, food that biodiversity. Thank you. Diversity in general. Okay. Thank you, Alejandro. Right. So if globalization is one of the key drivers to the homogenization of our diet, what can localization do to reverse that trend? Right here. Our, our concepts that are often quite complex, I feel like we need to simplify the way we express things. Like for example, I, I'll give an example in Fiji, there's been, in the Pacific, like there's a lot of pressure to uh, export crops. So there's the ministries of uh, agriculture will pressure or support farmers to grow certain types of taro. And in the process, other types of taro that may have been medicinal or ceremonial are left out and they're displaced and they often get forgotten. And I feel like if the true value of biodiversity was understood in a very holistic sense, that, that we'd be taking this out of this room into communities. Mm. Yeah, and that collaboration is so key, right? Between those in the room who are practitioners and scientists in the communities who are doing the work as we heard earlier in the panel. And we have a great example of that in our first course track, which is launching tomorrow, um, based in Monaco, Peru, where they have plant scientists who are partnering with nutritionists in the communities to understand how they translate this information in a way that is relevant to, uh, to households as well as uh, in schools and working on school procurement. So that collaboration is really critical. Thank you, everybody. Come see Jackie or myself if you have any interest in, um, in Food EDU and the Food Omics and Society course track where we talk a lot about ways, ways of knowing food and biodiversity. Um, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. you. Big round of applause to Fabrice, Jackie, and Kevin, who despite some technical difficulties prevailed this afternoon. Um, we have a lot more planned for today. So we have one more keynote uh, before we go into our breakout groups, which will be really exciting and fun, I promise. So do not leave. 